just going to be a video on how to fit the Sony XAV AX1000 head unit into um, this is an Audi A3 an 8P uh, Sportback 2009. Um, so first things first, going to remove the old head unit. So I've got these keys here. Um, and what you want to do is you want to have the slant towards the middle of the head unit and when you put it in you should hear a positive click like that and there's that. There we go, just have to give it a bit of a wiggle. And then what you want to do is apply some outward pressure, like that. I find it best to use sort of the corners and you can get even pressure on both sides. Um, and now I've got this out wobble. So I just realised I can't actually put that in another gear. I need the power on for that so I can't remove the keys if I do put it in sport. So I'll just have to go with that. I'm just going to put this here to save me marking anything up. So what we want to do, pull it out, make sure it keys out the ignition, powers off centrally. And then we'll have a couple of connectors to remove at the back here. They are slightly awkward to remove out. Um, the antenna one especially is a bit hard, but this is a quad lock connector, so this one's quite easy. I don't know if you'd be able to see, but the bottom there, there's a black tab, and then just above it is a, another tab, and if you squeeze it and then I think it's pull up and then lift the lever back you hear the click that comes off and then for this one I believe you've got to I think there's two tabs you've got to squeeze on this that's just one and then squeeze it and then pull it I believe but it is is quite a tough um, quite a good connection in there so a little wiggle and that'll come off like that right so now I've got this out and then don't try and just yank these out there's little bits on the side here if you can see that just press it in and then pull out and you'll be able to remove the keys or so just remove all of them so press and pull. So just the heads up, I didn't follow the instructions exactly here. What you should have done at this point is to put the um, cage which comes with the Connects 2 kit into that black surrounding fascia and then plug it into the head unit slot um, and then you can, you, you can actually screw the tabs which are come in the Connects 2 kit onto the side of the head unit and then you've got to align them at a correct position. So when you're screwing uh, the tabs, you can see sort of the side of the head unit when I'm holding it there, there's three, um, three or four screw holes. So you'll get the tabs um, and you'll screw them to the holes wherever you think will make your stereo fit flush. Use the screws to put them in and you'll also have the little spring clip underneath it. And yeah, set it at a position. You might have to ha have a bit of trial and error which um, keeps the head unit flush. So the next thing to do as per the instructions is to prepare the patch lead. Now I just had a quick look at it off camera just to understand it, she didn't see me working out for ages. But um, So you've got the pin configuration here, so to make sure you get it right, reserved just meaning there isn't a wire in. So you've got one, two and three with no wires and here it says pin one, so just to make sure one, nothing, two, nothing, three. So then you've got the right orientation of the wires um, and then you can see that this is concerning J1, J2 and J3 and J1, J2 and J3 are pins 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This is like a, a jump lead. Um, so what, you, what you're what you going to need to do is have a look for your map brand of the stereo like mine Sony. So here it's saying J1, 1 which means link made 
J2, one link made, J3, one link made. So I need links between the jumpers on J1, J2, J3, which makes it quite easy for me because I don't have to do anything. So that just means that um, J1, orange, I need the link between, so I keep that like that. J2 is green, keep the link there. J3 is purple, and I need that again. And then um, I'll be using the jack connector. I won't be using key one, key two, or ground. I'll just be using the jack to plug in to the um, stereo. I believe this will be in the interface box and the stereo. Right, so the next thing to do, looking at the instructions, connect the 12 pin black connector to the stereo patch lead to the interface. So what we're doing here, got the interface. Oh. Did not want to drop that down there. Try not to do that. <clears throat> so as you can see the interface in that orientation, you then connect 12 pin black connector to the stereo patch lead to the interface so that'll just plug in like that I should hear a click like that and that's connected and then as we said before we'll just be using the jack connection on the stereo we don't need to use any of these wires so connect the opposite end of the patch lead to the steering wheel control input on the back of the aftermarket stereo so 3.5 millimeter jack of wire input depending upon the stereo brand please okay um, so yeah just looking at the back here so remote so this would be for the rem remote control um, of the steering wheel controls so you've got a rear camera input I'll probably do that at some point microphone I am gonna run an external mic just to have hands free um, and then this will be for the antenna and then you've got various plugs here uh, which will be for the left and right speakers and amplifier I believe um, yeah so in essence this will plug into here into the remote and then I'll have my external microphone here so the next thing is connect the mail power because here you've got to, you'll get two wires in the kit. If I were to realise this, probably why this kit costs a bit of money, you, you've got two um, different types of connectors. So this is for the 12 pin quad lock connector, I think it's called, or not 12 pin, but it's a quad lock connector. Um, and you may need to use this other one, I think it's something for the ISO adapter, but this this will basically end up plugging in what's the correct orientation for this like that at the bottom probably like that I believe because that's nothing in there so sorry yeah. I don't think you can get it to go in wrong anyway and then you'll pull this down and now that's that's into place. So you you're converting the leads now. So then what it looks like is these are the looms which came with the head unit. So we've obviously plugged the quad lock in now, and then I believe this goes in here. You should hear a click like that, and then you'll end up connecting go like that and then this one will connect this way the connector can only go one way but I was just sort of making sure you see here I think the you've got permanent live and switch live and I think the yellow's a switch live so we've got yellow matching up with the yellow here um, and then the purple with the purple, you know, the colours are matching up, so that is good. Um, I don't think I'm going to be using these wires for the time being because I'm not going to fit the, the camera um, as yet. Um, and then it's just a matter of plugging this in. If 
funky looking connector. I'll have to work out what's happening with this. I think this is the antenna on wire. So it will only come on when um, FM or AM is selected, I think. Something like that. So then, now I don't know if it, so it will match this one. So you've got, you can see which one you've got to connect it to because it's got um, a clip here which will slot into there and then just push it through. And that is now in. So it's, a, oh, it's a weird connector. So it sort of twists a little bit. So push in like that and then twist it so it's straight ish. And that's in place because I don't think it will go in this one. No, so it has to be this one. So here it click, it's gone in. And this will plug in to here. I think it's a bit tight. Might need a bit of a bit of gentle persuasion. So that's gone in. Um, I'm pretty sure that isn't to do with that. Just want to have a look at the instructions. So we've got front, which are these, and then rear, which are them ones. So we want front, left, and front, right. They're the same. Front, left, front, right, and then rear, right, rear, left. And then this will be for the external microphone, which I will fit. Um, I probably will put it now. I'm not going to put everything in just as yet because I want to um, sort of test it while it's out, so to speak. So I'm just going to get the external mic. So I just need to sort out the aerial adapter with this wire here. I believe it might actually end up slotting into the connector. For I think what I'll probably do is turn it on now just to see what happens, what's working, what's not, so I can sort of determine where I need to, to plug this in. So I just missed that step there. Connect the 14 pin black connector of the way main wiring loom to the interface. Um, again, this is all messy at the minute, I'm just sort of doing it for a, a test to fit up. Alright, so that's in now. So hopefully... Oh, it's going to be annoying at doing that. So I'm probably not going to set all this up just yet, I'll go with it because um, that's quite responsive which is good. I suppose I could set it up, it'll probably lose all the time and then everything anyway because I'm going to take it off um, just to, to fit everything back up, I just want to make sure everything works first. Ignition, it's powers off, ignition's still in, take it out and it turns off. Ignition back on, um, key in, turn on. We're working again. So I want to check my Bluetooth connectivity, check the auxiliary works, Apple CarPlay works, um, and then I'll come back when I'm sort of happy with how it's all working. Check the microphone as well, and um, I'll sort of come back when I'm fitting everything back up. Okay, so I will get back to you then. Right, so I was just looking back because I said about this um, antenna wire. Back in the this is just sort of a heads up about what actually happened when I was doing this. So I was looking at the antenna wire and it looked like um, it needed to be plugged into the remote out, which I think is either like antenna turn on or, or sub turn on. Um, and you'll sort of see in a minute, but I basically ended up having problems 
with the rear speakers not working and the sub not working um, when this was all in place. So this part of the video I ended up plugging that loose blue wire from the antenna into one of the housings which connects to the blue and white wire from the stereo which is remote out. Um, but yeah when I connected it I had problems so um, no sub, no rear speakers, no output at all. Um, so when I was looking into it, it actually looked like the um, the l slightly larger blue um, wire, which had a bullet uh, mail connector on, I believe, which is on the actual Connects 2 loom. Um, that should have actually been connected to the blue and white um, on the stereo output. So I ended up, you'll see in the video in a little bit, but I ended up um, test fitting that and that sorted all the issues so I ended up removing the blue and white wire from the housing um, from the stereo loom and then with the larger blue wire with the bullet connector um, I then connected it together by putting the female end on the blue and white wire um, and then that seemed to, to caught, um, sort out all the problems so you can sort of see that I'm doing that now I'm taking these connectors off and I'm going to feed that blue wire in to be honest, I don't know exactly what um, that wire does because it seemed to work exactly the same um, when I had that plugged in and when I didn't have it plugged in, so I'm not sure the, the exact purpose of it. But all I know is when I put the larger blue wire on with the bullet connector, you can sort of see dangling down just there. Um, with the blue and white wire from the stereo, that fixed all the issues and I didn't have any problems. So... Uh, just a heads up because I don't really think what I'm doing now is necessarily needed not in my case anyway um, yeah so just so you're aware of that 100% sure sort of want to have a look at what way this is going to go in and I think And that's clicked in. So now that's connected. I'm just going to connect these back. So then we want to connect these back to how we had them before. So we've got the purple, which is going to connect to the purple this side. And that to that side with the newly added blue wire so right now everything is connected i'm going to run through functions so i'm going to test fm's working like i did show you earlier um check the apple carplay is working bluetooth um steering wheel controls microphone all the functions and once it's once i've done that i'm going to start placing everything in and getting it all locked in and in place so i'll get back to you when we're there right so i had um a bit of a problem um, because this was something I was sort of confused with at first. It says from the antenna wire, the blue wire connects to the remote out. Um, on both of the wiring diagrams, it's showing a blue wire, um, and then the blue and white wire from the stereo. So I basically wasn't getting any sound from the rear speakers or the sub. Um, and apparently it's looking at, again, this is another blue wire, um, so it sort of wasn't that clear in the instructions, but there was just a blue wire hanging off on a bullet connector. So um, I think that that actually needs to connect straight to the blue and white wire. So I didn't have a crimp to replace and put in that position and, and to connect it. So what, I'm, what I've done is just roughly tape them with insulation just to test them first. Then what I'm going to do is with a bullet connector, if this all works, um, then I'll end up putting the bullet connector on this side, the female end, and then push the male in, and it's a good solid connection. So I'll get back to you when I'm. So this is what I was talking about. So we've got this, which is um, I think the remote out. I guess it is for the amplifier and rear speakers. And then this was the wire that I just test fitted it to. It's bad. I get that. Just with the insulation tape to wrap it around, made sure it was a tight connection. It was good enough for the purpose that I needed to check that it all works. 
So what I'm going to do now, I've got a um, somewhere here bullet connectors here. So I'll strip and crimp. I'll cut this connector off, strip and crimp this, and that fits perfectly onto here. So you've got a solid, safe connection there. Um, so I'll do that and then get back once uh, I've done that. That's what I was talking about. Um, just use the red bullet crimp and then the red setting on the crimp tool. Crimp that down and it fits perfectly in there. So, you know, good, secure, safe connection, insulated all around as well. Um, right, so I'll now get ready to put everything into the car. So on this part of the installation, obviously you'll have noticed that I've missed a couple of bits. So um, once you're happy with all the wiring and everything like that, then <clears throat> what you want to do is the fascia, the outer surround, which you can see there, you want to put the um, metal cage, I use the one from the Connex 2 kit, into the slot there, being careful not to trap any of the wires and obviously you want the uh, head unit disconnected for that um, and then once you get it, my cage was really tight so it was quite hard to get in but once you get it in there's some um, prongs on the inside and you just want to put push them which will hit the inside surface of the stereo hole um, which holds the cage in place just so it doesn't fly forward um, so then once you've got that in place you then like I said earlier at the start of the video, you'll need to um, put the clips which will come with your kit, um, they're like mounting brackets, onto the side of your stereo um, and you got you want to sort of make sure you use the right holes um, to line up um, your stereo to make sure it's as flush as it can get and when you're putting these brackets on each side you also um, need to put these clips in, in the grooves um, and then screw them in and then you can plug all the wires in and also what I've done if you can see on top of the steering wheel I just loosened the panel underneath the steering wheel and ran um, a 3.5 millimeter jack for the audio input um, microphone so I've just stuck that on the steering wheel there um, and ran that through and then push all the wires um, to the back of the head unit and connect them all, make sure you don't trap them in, slide it in, push it back, you'll hear it click. And then there's an outside fascia, because um, they'll still you can still see like the bezel or the of the cage, and then you put the outside fascia around the stereo, um, push it down, lock it in place. And as you can see with mine, um, I didn't manage to get it as flush, so I, it's because of the positions which I put the clips on the bracket they would need to come further forward to the stereo so they clip in um, as the stereo is closer to him to be in flush but I mean um, I'll sort that out at some point because I'll probably do a rear uh, parking camera um, so when it comes to that I'll I'll take it out and, and get it flusher um, but yeah so that's the bit which I missed out and all I'm doing here is just sort of running through the functionality of the stereo making sure that the radio works making sure bluetooth apple carplay steering wheel control functions i checked it earlier but i just want to check it again now it's all in place so you don't need to um <coughs> watch me do all of that but yeah so once you've got it all in place run through the functions everything that you can think of make sure it's all working correctly um and i hope this has helped you um to fit the Sony XAV AX1000 to um, an Audi A3 8P should be fairly similar with a lot of aftermarket stereos um, yeah I'm trying to upload videos weekly um, starting on this car so if you could like share and subscribe it uh, that would be appreciated and I'll catch you on the next video <laughs>